What's going on, folks? I'm about to show you what could be wrong with your microwave. If, say, your microwave won't come on when you press the button for it to come on or when you plug it up, as well as if your microwave does come on and the lights come on and you start it and the tray spins, but for some reason it won't get hot, as well as if when you first turn your microwave on and you hit the start button, it blows your breaker. There could be several different things that's wrong that can cause these problems. So I'm going to show you that now. The first thing you'll need to do is go ahead and open up your microwave. I flip my microwave onto the front where the face of it is facing down. And if you look, you'll normally have about three screws. Here's one right here. Let me take it now. These are happens to be security screws. So you'll actually need a security bit. So you can get like a security bit set pretty cheap from like AutoZone or Home Depot or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this screw from out of it. And I'll show you what I when I get to the inside. You'll be able to see the components of your microwave. Just like a quick review. Well, just a quick, you know, run through. This right here is your magnetron. This right here will actually create your microwaves itself right here. This transformer down here is your high voltage transformer that supplies the power to your magnetron that's up here. Then you have your low voltage transformer right here as well as you have a relay right here. Sometimes when this relay goes bad that'll cause your magnetron not to work right here because this relay is not sending power down to your your high voltage transformer. On this microwave, the issue was is that every time the lady would start a microwave, it would blow the breaker. The breaker would trip every time that she tried to start it. So it could be multiple different things that can cause this. Normally, if you have this issue to where when you turn your microwave on, it blows your breaker. This right here is, let me get a closer look on it, right here is your capacitor right here. You want to be very careful when you're dealing with your capacitor because your capacitor actually carries a voltage to it. Most of them have an internal resistor that slowly diffuses the voltage that's on it, but you want to make sure that before you start messing with this that you 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 thoroughly discharge the voltage from it. And normally you could do that by taking a pair of needle nose pliers and touching both sides of it. Make sure that you have a pair of rubber needle nose pliers. What I would recommend though is if you're not comfortable with dealing with capacitors and all that, is just get somebody who knows about it to do this part for you. And also there's multiple videos up that you can find on YouTube showing how to discharge a capacitor. But if you look right here, this is your capacitor. Most of the times, uh, let me touch it, right here, this metal look like a cylinder that you see that's actually your capacitor right here. So if you're having an issue with your microwave to where when you turn your microwave on, it trips your breaker and blows out your power, it normally means that you have a bad capacitor and you need to replace your capacitor. Now, say, for example, you have an issue to where you turn your microwave on and it, it, it comes on, the tray spins, nothing is blown, but it just doesn't get hot right. Now, what you probably need is a new high voltage dial, which is this black thing that's right here. And it's pretty cheap and easy to replace it. All you have to do is remove this one screw right here, which is a Phillips head on most of them. Then if you could look inside of here, it plugs into your capacitor. Let me get a good look. Yeah, see me moving it? So normally I got to do is just take a pair of pliers. But once again, make sure that your capacitor has been discharged. And like I said, if you don't feel comfortable dealing with capacitors and electrical stuff like that, I would say get somebody who is and allow them to discharge it and you can finish from that point on. But like I said, or you can find videos on YouTube that shows you how to discharge it. I mean, and this right here is your high voltage diode. So if your microwave comes on, it turns and all that, but for some reason it's not heating, which normally means that your diode right here may be the problem if it's actually coming on. Now, if you turn your microwave on 
and you don't hear the humming noise, then normally it means that your Megatron right here pretty much it's not working. So you may need to have that replaced or you could have an issue with your high voltage transformer or it could be your relay, which is right here, that basically sends power to your high voltage transformer. And also you can have a possible issue with your low voltage transformer that's over here. But on this microwave, while I said that it, most of the times when you have a problem to where you turn your microwave on and it trips your breaker is that you may have a bad capacitor, which is I showed you over there, as well as if you turn it on and it's, everything is working fine, but the food is not heating up. And that means that you need a new uh, high voltage diode, which is this right here, which is pretty, like I said, you got one screw to remove and then you basically unplug it from your capacitor and once you've done that, you can buy a new one and replace it and the microwave should be fine. But on this microwave, the issue that was causing it to blow, was causing it to trip the breaker, it wasn't that it, that it wasn't the actual capacitor itself was the issue. It actually had a true short inside of it. If you look right up here, this is your actual wires. This is your electrical wire that you plug in to your wall. And that you can see right here, this is all burnt and melted, which means this could have been a true fire hazard right here because it obviously caught on fire at one point and burnt the rubber off around the wire itself that caused it to blow the breaker. So I'm not exactly sure why this happened. It could be it was a, a power surge or something that came through that caused this piece right here is completely burnt up. So on this microwave, to fix this microwave, you will have to replace this wire right here. What this happens to be right here is a fuse. So say, for example, your microwave won't come in at all. And you've already checked the outlet to make sure that your outlet was good and all that. But yet the microwave gets no power. You actually have a fuse that's located right inside of here that could be bad pop this open yeah normally it just pops open like that and right inside of her you'll see it has a fuse in her so sometimes just over time of using your microwave this fuse right here could go bad it may need to be replaced but on this one the fuse is not bad because the microwave would pop on, it would just trip the breaker. And then once you turn the breaker back on, sometimes the microwave would work and sometimes it would trip the breaker again. But like I said, on this one, it's absent to be burnt up here. It's actually a short that something caused it to catch on fire to burn the, the, the actual the red wire is burnt up, which really could have caused, I mean, a house fire or something like that. But if, say, this wasn't the case right here and this was fine and you got no power to your microwave and then you may want to come right here and check this fuse right here this fuse right here may be blown and that could cause your microwave to get no power so what i would say is go ahead and replace that fuse right here it's pretty simple All you gotta do is just take like a flathead screwdriver or something and pop it out and then disconnect your two ends from the fuse itself and once you disconnect those two ends, you'll be able to replace it. I'm going to show you that. All right. As you can see now, I removed the, the hold the case that the fuse goes into. So you can see now I have the fuse right here. So basically what you need to do is disconnect. You will have to disconnect these two lines right here that go to this fuse to basically replace that fuse. But like I said, on this one, it's burnt up right here. So this whole red wire will need to be replaced. You can disconnect the red side from right here where it goes onto this fuse at. But you also have the white side because you need to replace this whole piece right here. Unless you're going to try to, you know, twist in. Actually, I don't know if you can do that or not. But I would just say you should replace this whole plastic piece by unplugging it from here and replacing it because... It could be damaged or melted all the way up inside the housing of this, which it looks like it may be. But like I said, if that's not the issue 
And for some reason, you're not getting any power to your microwave. Like I said, if you check the, the outlet that you're plugging it in to make sure that's working good and it still won't come on, then your problem could be right here, which is that this fuse right here has been blown. And like I said, it, it could have been blown just from wear and tear, just using it for years and years. But I will also want to do a double check on everything to make sure there isn't a good reason for that fuse to blow. The same way I would say about when your microwave keeps blowing your breaker. You know, it could be that, you know, maybe your capacitor is bad on it and you could just change that capacitor out and it'll be fine. Or it could be something like this to where it actually truly is a short inside of your wiring where it's been burnt up like that, which can lead to a fire because you can't see this inside of your microwave. This is actually up underneath the covering. So as you can see what was going on, was it was basically burning the wire right here all right and like i said so once you remove the case like this from off of your fuse to disconnect this fuse to replace it all you have to do normally it just pull the two ends off of it see i got this end and this end so what i'm doing is i'm just grabbing it holding it and pull that end off and do the same thing to the other side pull like that and now you can replace this fuse Normally it's a 15 amp um, slow blow fuse that you may want to replace it with. Or you can just take this fuse itself to most stores and they should be able to tell you exactly what size that you need. And after you've done that, when you get your new fuse, you would just plug it in the same way. Like that on both ends like that. And then if that's the only thing that you that you want to replace or that you thought was wrong the next i would say go ahead and put everything back on and then plug it back up and see if your microwave comes on but like i said if that fuse is blown i would definitely do a check of your wiring coming all the way up just to make sure you don't have an issue like this to where it truly was basically burning where that wire you can see like all the black right here to where it actually was melting the wire so you truly want to make sure you don't have something like that because it can actually cause a fire. So once again, right, so once again, if you're having a problem with your microwave to where your microwave won't come on at all when you plug it up and you've checked the outlet, when you go into your microwave, you want to check this fuse right here to make sure this is good. I would say first check your wires to make sure you don't see no type of short like this somewhere. If you see this, then you know what the problem is. But if you don't see nothing like that when you check your wires and you come to this right here, of course, it'll be inside of a case like this, which you just want to pop open pretty much. And then once you have that open, you can get to that fuse. I would say if your microwave won't come in at all, replace that fuse right there and see if that helps. Now, if, if your microwave issue is the microwave comes on, but it's not heating up at all, then I would say go down here to your high voltage diode and this right here probably needs to be changed but like I said before you go dealing with this capacitor right here you need to make sure that it's discharged and like I said if you're not comfortable with dealing with electricity like that I would just get somebody who is to let them discharge that capacitor before you start working on it or like I said if you think you feel comfortable but you're not sure how to do it there's multiple videos that you can find on YouTube that's going to show you exactly how to discharge a capacitor. Once you have it discharged, what you'll want to do if you want to remove your, your high voltage diode because your microwave is not heating up, then you just want to have these wires off of, which they should already be once it's been discharged. You don't know those plier, and they'll pretty much just pull off. So these wires should be out the way. And once you have that off, you'll see your high voltage diode just has one screw over there you want to take out and then you want to pull the other end off of your capacitor you want to make sure that you remember also if you do remove these wires where they go back at you want to remember the configuration of the wires like on this one the orange wires at the top and then you have the diode that's actually plugged in that same uh, cylinder right here that has this one in it that has the orange wire and it just plugged below it and then on the bottom one, you have your red wire plugged into that one. So make sure that you make sure that you know your configuration when you plug stuff back up afterwards. And like I said, and if you're having an issue where 
your breaker keeps blowing like i said and 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 this your your fuse is good you see no wire damage nothing like that then more than likely your problem is going to be your capacitor which means you probably need a new capacitor and to remove that capacitor it's pretty simple also the same screw that you would take out to remove your diode is actually what's hold in this loop that you see on top of your capacitor so let me get it. once you take that screw out right there that's going to allow you to pick up on like the little u the little u thing that's holding your capacitor down you can just raise it up and pull your capacitor directly out and replace it with a new capacitor yeah, and like I said, and of course, if your issue is your um, your 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 magnetron is not coming on, uh, then I would say that you could have an issue with your high voltage um, right here, or you could have an issue with your your low voltage transformer over here. So if that's the case, and you got to go into you know doing some troubleshooting testing to make sure that your um, relay right here which is right over here is a, a relay that's actually soldered into the board. So if you have to replace that, you have to desolder it and then resolder a new one inside of it. But this can go bad also and cause a problem with no power coming to your high voltage transformer from your relay right here. And like I said, if that's not the issue, if you instead it could be another issue also say you have your microwave on you close the door, you hit start, and nothing happens. The light's on, but the microwave won't come on. It won't spin or anything like that. So when you have that issue, what it may mean is that you have a problem with your contacts. Back on your door, let's see if I can. On your door, normally, you have contacts that your, that your, um, let's see if I can find them. Yeah, normally you'll have contacts that your door connects to that tells the microwave that your door actually I can see them oh, let's see if I can get a view down here on this one you'll have contacts right here so when your door is shut it tells the microwave to come on now when you hit start so if you can watch when I close the door you'll see you see something pressing you'll see that pressing in and when that's pressed in like that see how it's up when the door is open that's up and once you close the door you'll notice that lever push in that then makes contact with some contacts that you have that pretty much tells your microwave to come on so if you have an issue with your microwave to where the lights are on, the clock is working and all that, but when you close the door and press start, nothing happens. You probably have an issue with your door contacts, which on different microwaves are going to be in different places. You have to kind of find out where they are by kind of following wherever your door makes contact at when you close it from the outside. So like I said, on this one, it's down here. I can see this piece right here up and down. So it tells me back behind there, it's going to be where my contacts are probably going to be at. And you may need to replace those contacts and that'll probably solve your problem. All right, folks, this is just some helpful tips on what may be the reason why your microwave is not heating or your microwave keeps on blowing your breaker or your microwave is just not coming on at all. So like I said, most importantly is to always be safe. And to make sure before you deal with your capacitor that the capacitor has been discharged and it doesn't carry a charge to it because the charge in there can be very harmful or possibly even deadly if it was to shock you. And also, like I said, when you're working on it, make sure that you do a thorough inspections on the wires because you may find something like this that's inside your microwave, which basically means that there truly is a short in it. In regards to if you change the capacitor or not, this is a dangerous thing to have in your house that you're going to be using. And I would say with this microwave, it's kind of old, so we're probably just going to be throwing it away. And if you have a microwave like this that has something like is wrong with it, 
I would say not just to set this microwave outside somewhere because somebody else may come around who see it, who pick it up and take it home with them. They're going to plug it up. And as you can see, even though the wires are burnt up, they're still making contact, which means this microwave will still work. It'll still come on. But eventually this could catch on fire because the wires are exposed like that. So if you're going to throw this away, what I would say do is to go ahead and completely cut the cord on it. That way, if you do find somebody who sees it and wants to take it home or possibly try to use it, they'll first have to try to fix it. And when they're trying to fix it by opening it up, they'll see this problem right here. So either they'll go ahead on and completely replace that wire so it's safe again, or either they just will throw it back away again and realize that it's just not worth it. So, all right, folks, once again, this is just some possible problems that could be wrong with your microwave and some quick troubleshooting points. Please check out our other videos and please subscribe. Thanks.